Hey, Tony here. Um, today, I thought I wanted to take time to do a video um, kind of showcasing what I picked up during the previous um, Criterion flash sale. And so I thought I would invite a guest to be with me to talk about um, what they picked up. So I'm very happy to have um, David from Film Collector Archive with me. And so um, very happy to have you with us, David. I'm sure you got a lot of good things from this sale. I did. And yeah, thanks for having me on, Tony. I did. I picked up a stack like I usually do. I picked up uh, 14 titles. Oh, wow. That's great. During so the sale. I, yeah, I only picked up five this time around just because um, I've been pretty steady with the purchases lately. So, but man, 14 titles is pretty good. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's funny. This is the first time I feel like that I've made a criterion purchase where none of the titles I picked up are digi books. They're all just the standard case, which is <laughs> yeah, that's good. kind of a, kind of a funny thing, but yeah, lots, lots of good titles to go through. Um, do you want to share with the audience a little bit about um, your channel and um, your presence on social media? Yeah. So film collector archive. Um, and that, and that is a pretty recent change. So I used to be cartoon fortress for a, a good solid few years there. And I made the switch over to Film Collector Archive. And of course, as of late, I've been on a hiatus. Uh, we'll call it a health hiatus. I've had a pretty crazy last few months, had some uh, major surgery and uh, recovery has been much, much more involved than I, than I thought it was going to be. And so haven't been on YouTube since December. So I got to tell you, it's really refreshing to be on and be filming a video and uh you know getting some content out there with you so yeah i'm i'm a film collector archive and uh, same name over on instagram and that's really um and if if any of your viewers are on letterboxd i am on there under fc archive okay um yeah, yeah i do i'll put your links down below so that way people will be able to find you yeah fc archive on letterboxd Film Collector Archive on Instagram, and then Film Collector Archive on YouTube. Okay, yeah, that's a pretty cool shirt you got there. Is that The Shining? Yeah, this is uh, The Shining. This is actually my newest shirt in my my growing film mm. shirt collection, if you will. But yeah, isn't, this the is, isn't that your favorite movie of all time? Or this is my favorite uh, horror film horror of all time. Film. Yeah, that's yeah, right. and it's and it's way up there. It's for sure in the top ten. It might. It's probably top five all time for me oh good um but yeah this is from a company called homage and yeah you can go to homage.com h-o-m-a-g-e.com mm -hmm. and they have just a wonderful selection what i really like about these shirts too is that they are it's a cotton poly and rayon blend so they don't shrink they're really great fit really lightweight breathable and yeah i have to check that out yeah it's, it's uh but yeah this is the course the original film poster and book cover image that they use here but yeah very cool but that's well, the shirt i guess we could go ahead and start talking a little bit about what we picked up from the sale um did you want to go yeah. first yeah i know my stack is a little large isn't it yep um so i figured i i have this kind of broken down and I, so i figured i'll start with new releases if you're good with that yeah that's good um, so first up here, I have a film called Time. Uh, this is spine number 1109, and this is from 2020, so obviously a very recent film. And uh, it's only 81 minutes, so it's a really quick watch. Um, and the cool thing is it's actually filmed in black and white, mm. um, which I know you know me really well. I'm a huge fan of black and white photography and film in general, so... Uh, yeah, filmed in black and white, and this was actually, so again, it's from 2020, but this was still given a new 4K digital master, um, and then has a, a decent amount of extra features. I don't know if you're... Yeah, let me see if I can make you full screen. I don't know if, if people are going to be able to see this. Yeah, that might be hard to see. Yeah, we can, I won't show the back from now on, but... So what, I, year, did, what year did that come out? So this is 2020. I mean, the, I mean, it was filmed in 2020. It was filmed in 2020, and then this is one of the new 
releases from this year for yeah, I'm not familiar from, with that. from Criterion. It's a documentary, um, which that's another thing I yeah. I love are documentaries. You know that. Um, so yeah, so we have time, and this is actually uh, an Amazon film. Oh, really? Um, Amazon Studios, and so I believe this is available on Prime uh, for anybody that's wanting to watch the film that maybe you don't want to just blind buy discs like I do all the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's available on Amazon Prime, and I'm I'm really intrigued by this one. So yeah, that's, that's good. my first selection. Okay, well, my first selection, like I said, I only got five titles, but I did pick up Miller's Crossing. I wanted to really add this one to the collection. I've actually never seen this film before. Yep, so you got it also? Yep. Um, but I do love um, Joel and Ethan Cohen. And um, like I said, I have never seen this one before. I've heard nothing but great things. So when I when I heard that they were releasing this, this was one that I definitely wanted to add to the collection. Are you familiar with this film? Yes, I am. I've I've seen it, but I I have to tell you, it's going to be like I'm watching it for the first time, especially because we get a a 2K digital restoration approved by the DP Barry Sonnenfeld, mm -hmm. um, which I'm really excited to see how this looks. But it's basically going to be like I'm watching the film for the first time because it's been, uh, I mean, I'm I'm talking a solid 15 years since I've seen this, mm -hmm. um, and I'm I'm a big uh, Joel and Ethan Cohen fan. Um, I'm hoping because now we have Blood Simple. Mm -hmm. as, as far as I know, we just have Blood Simple and Miller's Crossing from their filmography in the Criterion Collection. Yeah, um, Blood Simple is one of my favorite films of all time. You yeah, mind? Um, I, I actually re I just watched that last week and really enjoyed. I oh, seen it before, but I just rewatched it last week. It was great. Yeah, and that's that's a uh, 1984. That that mm -hmm. came out the year I was born, actually. Um, but yeah, Blood Simple is incredible. Miller's Crossing is not top tier Coen Brothers for me. Again, it's been a long time since I've seen it. But I'm hoping that this is maybe a segue into us seeing No Country for Old Men. Mm -hmm. My favorite. It, it, it's always a battle between No Country for Old Men and Blood Simple for me. But mm -hmm. uh, And uh, Fargo. So Fargo... Fargo and no Country for Old Men would be awesome, but Man, yeah, I would, I would love that to get both of those other titles in the Criterion Collection. I hold my breath every month for the announcements. I'm hoping, you know, that especially No Country for Old Men that we oh, get a, yeah. and and if we could get that in 4K, my goodness. Yeah, what's what's another what's another older title that you picked up during the sale? Um, yeah, so let me. Let me dig in the stack here. So I got a couple of classic Hollywood titles. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first one I'll show here is from 1939. Uh, Runtime of 121 minutes in black and white. Spine number 806. And this is, uh, I believe, directed by Howard Hawks. Um, this is Only Angels Have Wings. Oh, I've never heard of that one. Um, this is a big gap in my collection, one that I've been meaning to buy for years. Uh, you've got Cary Grant and Gene Arthur, and yeah, directed by Howard Hawks. Mm. Um, classic Hollywood. It's it, it's a title. It feels like you know you, you need to have in your collection if you're a classic Hollywood fan. Yeah, that's so. kind of strange. I, like I said, I've never heard of that title before. So I guess it's really not that popular of a title or mainstream. Uh. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, in, in, in terms of the pretty essential title, but not one that I hear uh, talked about regularly yeah. in terms of, um, yeah, and this one has a new 4K digital restoration. And so, I mean, this should look fantastic, but a decent amount of extra features here and but yeah, I wanted to get, you know, I, I got a couple classic Hollywood titles, and this is one of them. Yeah, I'll definitely check that one out, because that's usually what I'll do before the Criterion sale, is go look at their website and kind of check out some of the trailers, special features yeah. and different things. Plus, I'm a real big um, fan of checking out people's recommendation videos, so that I can kind of get an idea of some different titles people are picking up. So, so if anybody Absolutely. has any recommendations for future criterion pickups please leave that in the comments below what yeah. else did you pick up uh so i'll go with the other classic hollywood title that i picked up and this is uh features two of my favorite 
favorite actors of all time. Uh, this is 1942, 114 minutes in black and white. And we have Catherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy in Woman of the Year. Oh, yeah. I, I, that's on my wish list. I need to, I really need to get that one. Yeah. So this is a, a comedy from 1942. Um, I'm a huge fan of these two. My, my favorite film I, featuring the two of them has to be Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a huge Sidney Poitier fan. And uh, Catherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy are just fantastic in that film um so this uh this has a 2k digital restoration i don't know if i said the spine number this is 867 features a new 2k digital restoration um you've got a 112 minute documentary on uh spencer tracy called the spencer tracy legacy uh tribute by Catherine hepburn oh yeah for spencer tracy Yeah. yeah so that's really the extra feature here that i'm I'm looking forward to diving in and then uh, diving in on, um, but I have to have it. I'm, I'm hoping at some point um, they announce uh, Adam's rib, which is another comedy with these two, yeah. but happy to have this in the collection now. Yeah. My, oh, sorry. I was going to say my, my wife, that's, that's something she, my wife loves is classic Hollywood comedies. And so we always watch yeah. through those together. So, you know, the lady Eve and, you know, yeah. bringing up baby and you know now we have you know woman of the year that's really kind of her yeah her i definitely niche. need to add that one to the collection because i've got those other two well another pickup that i got which was a new release is the piano yes you that one yep you got that one have you ever seen this movie before i have not and uh jane campion is on my radar because of power of the dog Mm -hmm. Uh, which is a new film featuring Benedict Cumberbatch. Okay. Um, And that's available on streaming. I plan on watching that really soon, but I did a little bit of of research on the piano. And if you look at the, I mean, the cast alone was enough Mm -hmm. for me to to commit. Um, But Yeah, so it's a 4K release, which is nice also. 4K. And the, the, the photography looks fantastic in this film. I actually saw this film when it was first released in the theater. Um, oh, yeah, 1993. Yeah, and I really don't remember much about it. Um, I guess back back in 93. Um, anyways, I don't remember much about it because it's been so, so long ago. But I do remember um, it being kind of slow paced for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know what I was expecting whenever I went in to, to watch the movie. So I'm definitely looking forward to to checking it out again and maybe even getting your thoughts about what you think about it once you've watched it. Oh, certainly. I think this one's going to bubble up to the top of my list on yeah. films I need to watch really soon. But I can't really yeah. see I can't really see the year on here without getting my magnifying glass out. But what what year did you say this come out? Yeah, so this is 93. 93. And, and what's the spine number? Uh spine number uh 1110. Okay. Um yeah, so it, for me, every time I think of '93, I think of uh, Jurassic Park coming out. I was, I was, I was nine years old, and uh, whenever I hear 1993, it's I go back to that theater experience. But good, good year for film. Yeah. But, well, what else did you pick up? So let let me go with my only other uh, new release, and this is a very okay. recent release. Uh, one that I'm really excited to watch. This is the second film by this director um that i have in my criterion collection the first being camera person um Mm -hmm. so this is a film by kirsten johnson about her father and this is called dick johnson is dead okay i saw that advertised i wasn't really sure what it was about yeah so this is so her father is um and i apologize i don't know the current situation if her father's passed on or not but this is filmed in 2020 and it's uh her father who is in kind of late stages of dementia. Oh. Um, and she is, it, it, it's basically meant to be kind of a cathartic, you know, dealing, dealing with his death through uses of, from what I understand, cause I haven't seen the film, some comedic elements and, and different things where she comes up with different ways for him to die. <laughs> oh really and it's and that's kind of acted out in these kind of comedic ways but it's 
from what I from what I understand, it's a very touching documentary. Um, there's it great is a dynamic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it documentary, but it's, um, but I think it's played up by some really well thought out kind of fun sequences and you know that they filmed. You know, so, so he's, even so he's in this. He's in this film. Yeah, he's he's in the film. He's really the centerpiece here, and okay. so I, I think it's cool. I think it says a lot about their relationship that mm -hmm. she could make. You know, something that maybe maybe at face value seems a little weird. Mm -hmm. It's different. I, it's different, but from mm -hmm. what I from what I hear, just a very touching film. And I'm this is another one, just like the piano. That's yeah. I'm, I'm going to add that really, to my list. Really going to bubble up, I think, to the top of my list. I've heard great things from other people in the community. I know um, uh, Nathan Jones, I was talking to recently, but he he presented on this film and I know he really enjoyed it. And this is another one, by the way, this is a Netflix film. Oh, okay. Yeah, it looks um, Yeah, so you can watch this via streaming again if you want to go that route as opposed oh. to purchasing the disc, you can watch it there. Okay. Of course, we're always adv advocates for purchasing the disc, but... Right um yeah and then quite a quite a few extra features on here as well but dick johnson is dead spine number uh 1111 11111 yeah it's a lot <laughs> it's a lot of ones so i guess the next criterion sale will be the sale in july i would assume yeah yeah from the barnes and noble sale i guess if they continue on with doing that Right. And there's, all of these, I'm making notes because, you know, any kind of recommendations I can get, I want to put it on my list to get next time that there's a well, sale. Well, we, you know, cut with the July sale, I can uh, double indemnity coming out on 4K. Oh, yeah. I I can hardly keep my head on straight. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's going to be, for me, that'll be the, the number one title I'm after for the summer sale. Well, the next one that I picked up is Written on the Wind. Nice. Really nice looking artwork. Um, I know it's, older, it's an older, older film, of course. But, you know, I had previously purchased some other titles that were, um, yeah, so I got All That Heaven, All That Heaven Allows, which I really enjoyed this one. And then I got Magnificent Obsession, which I've also watched and enjoyed. So it's nice to have another film in the collection. Um, did you pick this one up? I didn't. And, you know, I need to, I know those are you know, directed by Douglas Sirk, Jane Wyman and Rock Hudson. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a, that's a great on-screen duo. And I don't know, those, those are ones I haven't, I haven't, uh, I haven't seen yet. I haven't added to the collection and I should probably, th those actually might be three that I add to my summer list to pick oh, up, yeah. just, just pick up the three of them. I know that these two that I had already seen were really good. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing this one um, with Lauren Bacall and Robert Stack in it also. So, so yeah. those, should be, those should be really um, interesting to watch. Well, um, yeah. What other title did you get? Yeah. So I've got several more to go here. Um, so this next one is from a director, uh, Jim Jarmish, and I'm new. Uh, I'm new in his filmography um, and of course my mind is, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, Stranger Than Paradise is a, uh, uh, familiar. sorry, I'm looking over here at my collection. Stranger Than Paradise, I got it right, <laughs> um, is the only Jim Jarmusch film I've seen and I really, really enjoyed it. It's it's very much a slow, uh, slower pace. I've seen that. I've got that one in my collection also. Oh, it's oh, and you have seen it. Yeah, black and white. Yeah, I loved and, it. Um, two guys and a girl went to the beach or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I absolutely I yeah. loved the the slower pace. Just very much a character piece. Mm -hmm. Um, so I I knew that I was going to continue down the path of seeing more Jim Jarmusch films. So what and is I've it? heard. I've heard really excellent things about this from 1986. So this is, because I believe Stranger Than Paradise was 1984. So this is 1986. And this is uh, Down by Law. Okay. Um, in fact, I, yeah, I haven't seen uh, that. Cinema Dave, was he recently featured this title. 
mm. on one of his recommendation videos, I believe it was. Okay. And, um, and this is another one that's filmed in black and white. So I guess that's an aesthetic that Jarmish yeah. enjoys. Um, and yeah, this is a new restored digital transfer. Uh, and it was uh, overseen by Jarmish. Uh, this is uh, spine number 166. So this is an older... I'm not sure when this is up when this was upgraded to Blu-ray. I'm sure it was originally a DVD release. Yeah, probably so. Um, but uh, wow, a, a ton of extra features on this one, and it's got uh, it's got a feature on here, a Q and A with Jarmish, in which he responds to fans' questions. Oh, and I know cool. this is not the this is not the first time he's done that. I think that's kind of a regular thing with him. He likes to interact with the film collector community oh that's good which i think is really cool so yeah. that features on here as well as a, a bunch of other features and of course you get the uh the director approved sign sticker on this one yeah uh, but yeah down by law and this is uh again 1986 with a runtime of 107 minutes oh that's great what, what other title did you pick up um so the here let me go with actually this bottom one um so this is one that i've i've been meaning to pick up for ages this is famous for being uh currently the oldest film in the criterion collection oh really um this is from 1921 it's a swedish film in tinted color and uh this is the phantom carriage oh yes i've got that i've seen it i loved it Oh, awesome! Oh, yes. yeah. This kind of this kind of gives me vibes of uh, Carl Theodore Dreyer's um, Vampire. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. um, which Vampire? Man, do I love that film! It's that is probably if I, if I had to pick a film in the collection that's the most atmospheric, mm -hmm. it's it's probably going to be Vampire. Yeah, you you're really going to enjoy this one then. And yeah, and that's I kind of get the same vibes from this and. I love silent film um, and yeah, it was just a gap in my collection that I had to fill. It's another one. I, I think the reason I haven't picked this one up is I usually am after it during the, the Barnes and Noble sales and every copy I see is just beat to crap. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so this is spine number 579. The runtime on this is 106 minutes, but um, the cool thing on this one that it has a new digital restoration done in collaboration with the archival film collections of the Swedish film Institute. Mm. Um, and I know this was a big inspiration for Ingmar Bergman, oh. um, obviously being of, you know, Swedish descent, like this mm. is probably one that's close to home for him and mm. is, is a known inspiration for him and for his work. But Anyways, I, I'm really excited to watch this. And sorry, not to double back on Vampire, but any fans of Carl Theodore Dreyer's Vampire, mm -hmm. um, the, the Criterion edition is really nice. It does include the original source novel or source material. It's a thick package. Um, but there's also a new edition that is that was announced by Eureka in one of their nice hard box mm -hmm collector sets i immediately pre-ordered that i did the same thing yes i have yeah. to have that yeah it's, so been, it's been a few years since i've actually seen this um particular film so i may need to check that one out again boy i'm, I'm excited i know i'm saying this about everything I'm, I'm really excited to watch this one as well i there's not enough hours in the day tony yeah i know you can but, you can tell I, I you know i watch a movie every single day i had this yeah. is my second year doing that and i still haven't made a dent in the collection that's it's the it, the eternal struggle of the collector, isn't it? I probably need to take about a year off from actually purchasing anything, just to kind of get a dent in the collection. But I can't do that. I, I've tried to work myself up to doing something like that, and of course, mm -hmm. we live in a time where there's just Too many such good. amazing, amazing yeah. physical media releases. But we've got to enjoy it while we're getting these amazing releases. Yeah. So, so another title that I picked up during this sale is called The Learning Tree. Excellent. Which I'm not very familiar with it. I, like I said, I always browse the website and try to get um, hints of things to, to purchase. And just the artwork alone, I thought it looked really amazing. Um, have you ever seen this before or do you have this one in your collection? 
I have not seen it. I have it in the collection. And so Dude. this is a film directed by Gordon Parks. Mm -hmm. And I believe, sorry, co correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. I believe he was the first African-American to direct a Hollywood studio film with The Learning Tree. Um, and then, of course, he went on to direct uh, Shaft, yeah. which is a really big title. Also, just recently, just announced this week from Criterion, actually yep. for 4K. Um, but yeah, that's yeah, Gordon Park. So I'm I'm really excited to watch that film. Very very important film. Yeah, I've watched the um, the trailer, of course, before I purchased it. It looks very interesting. I definitely look forward to checking this out. So it's from 1969 which was the year I was born. You know, you had your film that you got that you were, oh. the year you were born. So this was 1969 and it's 107 minutes. So um, spine number 1107. I can actually read this one. Um, nice. <laughs> yeah, it looks really beautiful. I, I just love the artwork on this one. Yeah, it is great. And uh, born in 1969, so you must be a fan of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which takes place in 69. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I know that's another one of your favorites. Oh man, I uh, that's that's my favorite Tarantino film. I'm still I, jealous that you got that big old nice um set. Yeah, that that did have that nice collector set. Yeah, I, I actually think it sold out so quickly too. Well, I actually forgot that is a uh because I had watched the Blu-ray disc originally because I hadn't upgraded to 4K mm -hmm. with my equipment. That mm -hmm. was a 4K release, and I've now got a 4K TV and player, so I'm gonna have to pop that yeah, 4K yeah. disc in. Yeah. Um Okay, so moving on. So the next two are documentary films. Um, now, I previously owned the 100 Years of Olympic Films box mm -hmm. set. Did you sell um, And I, so I, I watched through a bunch of the films, and it's, it's one that I didn't feel like I was going to be revisiting on a regular basis. And so mm -hmm. what Criterion has started to do, they, they've started some standalone releases of these mm -hmm. olympic films and so i picked up the the two that they've done so far um and that is visions of eight and uh, tokyo olympiad so those are not a part of that big box set these are a part of that big box set but these uh expand on what's in the box set with okay. some great with some great supplemental material and then especially with visions of eight I can tell just by the heft and looking, you get a really substantial booklet mm -hmm. in here. And then uh, looks like more of the leaflet style in Tokyo Olympiad. But you get just basically the same film that's from that box set, but just really expound on, um, they, they really expound on the subject matter here with some great features and commentary tracks. And is there is there plans to do all of the films in that collection? I don't know. Oh, um, that would be nice if they would. Because there, there's some key films in that box set that I would like to see get standalone mm -hmm. releases. These are certainly two of them. Um, so ha had to pick these up. Yes, yeah, good. And you know, I don't know. May may maybe at some point I'll regret having sold that that box set. But so you did sell the box set. Yeah. So I don't have that box set in my collection. But I I love I love the Olympics. I love Olympic films. Mm -hmm. um, and so, which is probably, I'm not making a great case for why I sold it, but, <laughs> um, but I, I, I'll, I'll be picking up the standalone releases as they come out for oh, sure. Good. Yeah. I really hope um, that they do most of those. Yeah. I, in fact, my, probably my favorite film from that box set was, and I might not be getting the name right. I think it was 16 days of glory. Mm. Um, that's kind of the one I'm hoping they do next. If I if I had a a pick, yeah. Um, but yeah, these so Tokyo Olympiad was an upgrade from DVD to Blu-ray, and that is spine number one five five, with a runtime of 168 minutes. So these are going to be a bit longer. Um, and Visions of Eight uh, was not previously a DVD DVD release. This was a new Blu-ray release that got its spine number of 1081 so this is okay. pretty recent yeah and like i said just packed with extra features on both of these so that so the big box set was just one number for the big box set yeah okay yeah. so a couple of uh great uh documentaries i i can 
tell you they're great because I've seen them, but um, mm -hmm. excited to jump in on the extra features for sure. Well, the last movie that I picked up um, is Love Affair. Um, I'm not really exactly sure why I chose this one. Um, I do remember looking through a lot of films during the sale. And plus, I was always, um, I think you might have been the one that actually told me that the sale was going on. But um, I was just kind of rushing through while I was taking my break at work and didn't want to miss the sale, not realizing that it wasn't going to end till the next day. But I ended up just snatching this one. Have you ever seen this movie before? I haven't, uh, but I love Leo McCary. Um he has presence in the uh, in the collection with Make Way for Tomorrow. Oh yes, mm -hmm. uh, which is a fantastic, yeah. Oh, just just a heartbreaking, really wonderful film. So I will pick it up. I'll, I'll probably add that one to the July list as well, just by virtue of it being Leo McCary. Yeah, so it's from um, nineteen thirty nine. Yeah, and of course in nineteen uh, fifty seven, there was a remake with Cary Grant and Deborah Kerr. Um, which is actually funny enough with one of my mom's favorite movies, um, uh, an affair to remember. Okay. Yeah. I still haven't, I don't have that one either. Yeah. So that's, and that's not in the criterion collection. Right. Um, so, but yeah. Yeah, so this is an 88, this is 88 minute film. I can't really read the spy number. I, I think it says one, 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 four as the spy number for this. So it is a, it is a recent release. Yep. Yeah, I think that's really what I focused on were mostly the newer titles because the previous um, Criterion um, Barnes & Noble sale was the last time I actually made a big purchase. And mm -hmm. I had purchased so many of the other newer titles. So these are the ones of the newer ones that I wanted to pick up that I haven't picked up since that last sale. Um, yeah. what, else did you, what else did you get? Yeah, so I've got four titles remaining. The, and these all share the, the label of... Uh, this, this this is all Asian cinema, okay. Um, which is a big focus for my collection. I can't I can't get enough of Asian cinema just in general. Um, and uh, the first film here is from Kaneto Shindo, and he has uh, both Kira Neko, which I've seen and I highly recommend, and uh, Oni Baba, which I have not seen, but I. I do have in the collection. I picked that up during the Barnes Noble sale. Um, and this is his film. And I, I believe this is actually a, uh, another documentary that I have in the stack here. I believe it's a documentary style, but this is the naked Island. Hmm. Uh, yep. This is spine number 811. Mm -hmm. And this is from 1960 has a runtime of 96 minutes. Um, well, I'll just read the first part here. Director Kaneto Shindo's documentary, like dialogue free portrayal of daily struggle is a work of stunning visual beauty and invention. Okay. So and, no dialogue. Yeah. It's very, which I love films like that. I love films that are very um, meditative, very poetic. And, you know, I, I can think of, um, you know, the, like we'll take the Kotze trilogy, for instance. Um, anybody that hasn't seen the Kotze trilogy, I I highly recommend. Or maybe uh, Sans Soleil um, is another. Or um, uh, Antonio Gaudi, which is you know more of a meditation on architecture and and uh, you know no no dialogue is kind of what I'm getting yeah. at with with all of these um but yeah this this looks like it'll be very poetic very meditative which is right up my alley yeah. and it's you know an, an asian film um it just really checked all the boxes for me yeah um so i'm looking forward to this um and this is a yeah again spine number 811 and has a new high definition digital restoration um and then it's got a video introduction by the director by shindo uh, recorded in 2011. Um, I don't know off the top of my head if if he is uh, still with us or not. Yeah. Um, but that introduction was filmed in 2011. So uh, there's The Naked Island. Uh, next up, this is a more recent film. We get the director approved sticker here. Uh, Hirokazu Koreda. Uh, and this is Still Walking. 
Hmm. Um, the trailer on this completely sucked me in. It's one of these Asian kind of family dramas, um, which I really enjoy. I, I always enjoy. Um, of course, I'm a big fan of Yasujiro Ozu. Um, Still Walking seems to pay homage to Ozu in some ways, or at least that's what the trailer kind of made me feel a little bit of. Yeah. Um, if not, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying exactly, but it feels like maybe Ozu, uh, you know, is one of his inspirations. But uh, this is from 2008. So again, you know, fairly recent film, 14 years old, uh, 114 minutes in color. And uh, we get a new high definition digital transfer on this as well, directed by Coreda. Um, but yeah, this really jumped out at me. I've, I've had this one on the radar for a long time. Yeah. And those that recommend it seem to highly recommend it. So I felt really safe in, in the blind purchase on this. Yeah. I don't have um, any Asian cinema type films in my car. Um, I'll honestly, I'll go on the Criterion site and just filter by Asian cinema on Blu-ray and I'll just see what I don't have. So I know That's what I need good. to pick up. And, and, I, and I will say, um, uh, I mean, obviously we have Akira Kurosawa, but Ozu, Ozu and Kurosawa might be my two, they're, they're probably my two favorite Asian directors in the collection. Um, there's a few Ozu titles that I haven't picked up that are in the collection. And I, I know it sounds kind of funny. I'm a little hesitant to pick them up because I'm holding out hope that we'll get a nice big Ozu mm. box set. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, the same could happen for, you know, for Kurosawa for all we know, but. I probably just need to end up yeah. know, picking up the, the Ozu titles that I don't have. But. Yeah, because you, you might end up selling the box set and needing to have the individual titles after all. I guess I'm, I'm forming a track record here. Right. <laughs> um, all right, two more titles to go. Next up, we have a... Um, I, I have seen this film. Uh, this is from 1985 and is uh, directed by Juzo Itami. And this is Tom Popo. Oh, I've heard of that one. Yeah, it, I, so I've seen the film once, so I'm looking forward to revisiting it. It it is a strange mix of it. it it's very much focused on food, as you can kind of get here from the cover. Mm -hmm. um, it's very much based on food. Um, there's a healthy amount of comedy, and it's it's kind of an Asian film inspired by western filmmaking hmm. um it's very funny very quirky it it it's very unique i will say that uh what year did that come out 85 okay and i don't know if i said the runtime 114 minutes but um this has a nice new 4k digital restoration this is spine number 868 okay um, I think I've definitely seen that one on the site before yeah and and this comes recommended by a lot of people in the community as well yeah. um calling nathan jones out again i know he recently mm -hmm. talked about this one as well uh tom popo but really excited to watch it again and and kind of connect some more with it and the final film mm -hmm. actually we're finishing off with a a trilogy here so this is actually this actually comes up in their collector sets section mm -hmm. on this on the site it's not a box set it's a standard case but it's a multi-disc set featuring three films by Hiroshi In uh, Inagaki. And this is the Samurai Trilogy. Oh, I've got that one. I, I got that one from the last, I think, one of the Barnes & Noble sales. Yeah. I still haven't uh, watched it yet, though. Another one I've been after for a while, and mm -hmm. all of the copies I see in store just aren't... You beat up. ...in great condition, yeah. Yeah. So... This, yeah, and the, the back of this is red with black text, so it's kind of yeah. hard to read. Yeah. Um, we have uh, Samurai 1, Musashi Miyamoto from 1954 with a runtime of 93 minutes. Um, all of these are in color, by the way. Samurai 2, Duel at uh, Ichijoji Temple from 1955 with a runtime of 103 minutes. And finally, Samurai 3, Duel at Ganryu Island, 1956, with a runtime of 104 minutes. Um, 
and one of the one of the big reasons I wanted to pick up this set is uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Toshiro Mifune. Mm-hmm. He's my favorite Japanese actor of all time, um, and I am uh, certain that he's in at least uh, yeah. He's, he it mentions him on the back here, the Samurai trilogy directed by Hiroshi uh, Inagaki and starring the intimidable Toshiro Mifune. That was that was the big pull for me because I'm I, I love love to show, uh, Toshiro Mifune. Um, but yeah, three films here. I, I believe during the sale, this is like fifty bucks, maybe maybe even probably. less than that. Yeah, I'm thinking probably. 40. Maybe forty dollars. I don't know, yeah. but I uh, I was happy to get this and in perfect condition. So that's good, and that's just a regular case, isn't it? It's not a digi pack or anything. Regular case. I, I, I like I it when they this... do the regular cases. I love the regular cases. I think it's I think it's fun. You know, some of the designs they have for some of the digi packs, but just long term, um, I'm a big fan of these are Scanovo cases. Mm-hmm. Is the have you ever or whatever cases from their website? What's that? Have you ever ordered just the cases from their website? On a few occasions, yeah. yeah. And they're really yeah. good about if you receive anything damaged. I know that they're, they're really good about making good for what they've sold. So they're if you fantastic. ever get a broken case or missing a booklet or whatever, they've always been really good about getting those replaced. Well, and in fact, just this week I had to contact Criterion because one of my Godzilla discs. Mm-hmm. Uh, sank down into its little cutout oh, cardboard sleeve, and went down into the glue, and so I, I pulled the disc. I, I could hardly get the disc out of there. I had to really yank on it to get the disc out, and there was glue. Oh. The disc was just completely damaged. It was only one of the discs. It was disc number four, and I reached out mm-hmm. to Criterion, and they are they're sending me out a replacement disc. So. Um, and from what I understand, they've been in touch with the manufacturer, and I think they're going to be um, producing some new disc books. So, like the outer book, um, so basically everything minus the discs, they're going to produce new uh, disc books that don't that aren't defective where the discs slide in, okay. like that. So, Did, had you just recently opened that up and found it that way, or had you already had it open? No, I had already had it open, but noticed that this one, all of the other discs are fine, but I, I noticed this one disc was way down in there and it's just, it's just def, a, a defect of the case. Now, interestingly enough, I, I went on eBay uh, and I actually bought a custom Blu-ray case that has, that someone has made and that has the really great cover art from the criterion release, but then you can house your discs in a nice standard case. Yeah. Um, So I went that route. So I have that that'll be shipped out here anytime now. So I'll keep those in that case on the shelf. And then just because the book, the disc book is really amazing. And of course you get wonderful artwork and articles. And so that's great to have, but I just want to house the discs elsewhere. That's good. Yeah. Cause you know, I bought that set. I bought the set back when it was first released, thinking that it was going to yeah. sell out pretty quick. But it's yeah. still available, right? Yeah, and, and Criterion's really good about that in, in terms of not making things, you know, really I limited think, release. Yeah. Um, I mean, stock levels obviously go up and down, but that's what I like about Criterion is it's not limited to 3,000 copies or, yeah, you know, so it doesn't drive up demand that way, but there can certainly be pockets of time where that's, unavailable just because of stock but yeah well, well good i mean that's great that you were able to pick up all those titles like i said i'm going to really be working on my list my wish list for the july sale that will be coming It'll, july will be here before we know it um, oh there's there's some fantastic titles that will be available for that sale yeah so you saw all the new announcements for um so what month was it that they just announced? So they would have announced for June. So June. next month will be interesting because yeah. next month's announcements will be the ones that come out during the sale. I can't wait to see what they've got. And I'll, I'll go anything? on record. Oh, go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, uh, I want to go on record as saying, I feel like there's going to be a box set announcement next month. I thought we were going to get one this, you know, with the announcements this month. 
it, it seems that every year with the July sale, there's mm -hmm. that big, big box enough. set yeah. that, that mm -hmm. we're after. And so I'd be really shocked if we don't get a box set announcement sometime over the next month. Yeah. So did you see anything in the July in the June releases that interested you? Uh yeah, I mean first and foremost again Gordon Parks with the 4K release of Shaft. Yeah. is definitely going to be the headliner. Um I know a lot of people are excited about because John know, Waters. I've got this uh, um oh, three pack yeah. from one archive. Nice. Yeah, so I uh, we should mention the Criterion release will actually feature not only Shaft but Shaft's big score as oh, well. Oh really? Okay, that's great then. Yeah, so, so those are the two films that that one guy that you mentioned directed. Yeah, Gordon Parks. Yeah. So it's it's interesting because the the release itself is for Shaft um and instead of doing any kind of like box set style, mm -hmm. Shaft's big score actually appears as just a supplement. Oh, that's cool. On the Shaft disc. So you will get both. It's one of these, oh, you know, great. you get two films in one kind of a thing. Yeah, the artwork um, is amazing on it, too. The artwork is fantastic. Yeah. It's very reminiscent of the 1970s. Mm -hmm. um, really seemed to have hit, hit the nail on the head. Mm -hmm. And then I know, I know there's going to be a lot of people that are really excited for John Waters' Pink Flamingos. Mm. Um, that's been highly rumored for some time now so to see that officially get announced i know a lot of people are excited uh about that and then uh, a newer film uh the worst person in the world mm. uh which came out i know it's been it's been in its theatrical run uh this year um i'm very much intrigued by that i watched the trailer on that and mm -hmm. was immediately interested so i'm i'm certain i'll be blind purchasing that Talk yeah, I need about. to check. I need to check all those trailers. I really haven't really looked at it close enough. I need to, to explore all that and see what all's coming out. Even you know yeah. the um, April and May releases, also. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we've got a lot of great titles coming out. Um, and then also with the June releases, we got another Powell and Pressburger film uh, announced. Of course, we have the Red Shoes that recently came out on 4K. Did you ever so get that? I did. You did? Yeah. My uh, my son actually got that for me uh, for Christmas. He got, yeah, you some, so he, got you, he got you some red shoes for Christmas? He got me some red shoes for Christmas, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's uh, He always likes buying dad criterions. It's, it's funny, my kids know anytime it oh, I'm comes sure. time to buy dad gifts, it's like, oh, criterion. Yeah. <laughs> it is, and I don't get anything because I pretty much get everything I want to get for myself. So people have a hard time giving me gifts, but I always yeah. take gift cards. You know, I'm okay with gift yep. cards. Yeah, yep. cash, gift cards. Yep, any, exactly. any of the any of the above. <laughs> so just listening to you talk about all of these releases that you've gotten, I think that your name change from Cartoon Fortress to Film Collector Archive was a pretty good change. Um, Thank you. I mean, I know that you like drawing and um, doing um, cartoon type style drawings i remember yeah. you used to do a lot of that on your instagram page or are you not doing that anymore no so i i did retain the cartoon fortress instagram page okay and of, of course you know i had good intentions it, it's still up and i was okay. i still think i'm gonna get back to that in terms of just uploading some sketchbook entries and stuff like that yeah. i've done a horrible job of doing that but yeah with with content where I'm more film focused. It's I, yeah. I wanted something that was just a bit more on brand. Right. Um, and, I, and I think, I think on the thumbnail of this video that we'll be putting up for this uh, criterion flash sale hall, mm -hmm. I think you're going to be using my new um, logo. And that's actually uh, over this time where I've been offline from, you know, after having surgery, Mm -hmm. um, I went and uh, tweaked the logo as well. So that's the up, updated logo is what you'll be seeing on the thumbnail for this video. Um, and again, it's, I, 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 with that, I went with more of a black and white presentation, the logo being white backdrop being black. I wanted to simplify that. I felt like the colors were a little bit. Yeah. I thought it looked pretty good, but I do like that yeah. idea of just the black and the white. Yeah. So just, just trying to align brand with what I'm wanting to do. And 
And I don't know, you know, the plan moving forward, I've been offline since, you know, mid December. It's, I don't know exactly what the plan is going to be moving forward. I know I'm really interested in getting into um, more of the written review format, really, really advancing myself as a writer on film. Yeah. That, that has a lot of interest, but there's always that itch to produce videos. It's, it's just a lot of fun. So we'll, we'll see. It's, it's kind of yeah. in, in flux right now. And I think, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get it figured out. <laughs> yeah. And I'll definitely be putting your Instagram, your YouTube, and I'll also put your letterbox um, addresses down below. That way, if anybody wants to subscribe to you, if they haven't already, they can definitely check out all your content. Well, and, you know, and anybody that's watching your video that wants to comment, put your uh, letterboxed name in the comments as well. I'm I'm trying to build up my letterboxed community, if you will. Yeah, that's good. Um, just because I like to see what people are watching. I've gotten yeah, some great, mm -hmm. I've, I've gotten some great recommendations just by seeing what people are logging. Yeah, so. I'm the same way. Um, I, everybody that follows me, I always follow them back and I always like to look to see what they've been watching and kind of gives yeah, you an yeah. idea of what some good suggestions of what to watch. Absolutely. It's yeah. letterbox is, is really great. It, it is. Well, thank you so much for spending this hour with me. I uh, definitely want to do this again. Maybe when the July sale comes up, we can do this again, maybe even do a recommendation video or something. Absolutely. I'm always game. I love the recommendation videos. Yep. Okay. Anything else you want to say before we say goodbye? No, as, as always, I appreciate you having me on. I'm, always grateful for opportunities to collaborate and, and interact with the community. So thanks for having me on. Okay. Thank you. And thanks everybody for watching and we'll see y'all next time.